Um, perfect. All right, everybody, welcome to Back to the Basics training. We are doing phone objections. So uh, phone script is the, the most serious part, in my opinion, of this process of selling insurance. Why? Because it's your initial touch to each client. Um, so there's a lot of timing involved in order to be successful doing this um, business, okay? Especially when you get brand new leads, you call them immediately. It doesn't matter if they're an age lead. It doesn't matter if they're a platinum lead. You should call them immediately, okay? A lot of people ask me, when is the best time to make dials, right? The best time is any time. Right within the FC, uh, what is it? The FCC's guidelines. I can't remember what they're called, but it's from uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Right? You dial people after 8 a.m. Uh, 8 p.m. You can, but they're gonna, they're really gonna be not very happy about it. So um, dial up until 8 p.m. If you're dialing West Coast leads, obviously you have a little bit of advantage because you can go past your time and stay well within their 8 p.m. Um, time frame. Okay. So make sure you're dialing them as soon as you get them. It's going to start building up momentum. Um, something that everybody needs to understand is that I do 50 dials every day, okay? 50 dials a day. That is going to bring you about three to five appointments on platinum leads, okay? On age leads, that is going to bring you probably one or two appointments. So while you're grinding through the age lead stage, you're going to want to up that to 100, right? So that we can get you on platinums, get you on FE leads, okay? Um, another thing is that as soon, you know, the reason we put people on age leads is to cut your teeth, right? You're going to get all the same objections that you're going to get on platinum leads, just because I am on platinum leads does not mean that I don't get any objections. Quite the contrary. I get just as many objections, okay? Um, I'm just better equipped at handling those objections, okay? So we, we want to start you on age leads to cut your teeth and to keep your, you know, basically keep your wallet happy in the meantime until you start earning some money on those age leads. As soon as you earn some money, Okay, you should be re reinvesting, uh, I would say two thirds of that back into lead cost. Okay, that way you start picking up momentum, you're getting more leads to dial, which means more appointments set, which means more AP written. Make sense? Everybody wants to eventually hit the goal of $1,000 a week on leads. Okay, that is going to guarantee you about seven to 10,000 of annual premium per week. Every hundred dollars you spend on leads is about a thousand annual premium in return. Okay, even if you're not doing the best at this, it is hard work that outweighs talent every single time. So you're telling me if you spend a thousand dollars at a 70% contract, right? You spend a thousand dollars on leads, you write only 7,000 annual premium. Okay, what's uh, what's seventy percent of seven thousand? I can't do math as fast as Art Leaser can in my head. So you're going to get paid forty nine hundred dollars of that minus a thousand in lead cost. So your net profit is thirty nine hundred dollars. Is anybody going to be mad at spending a thousand dollars on leads that week if you make thirty nine hundred dollars? No way. So that's why it's so important to get good at uh, objection handling so you can get to that level, okay? And you can start reinvesting those leads. So make sure you are picking up your speed, dialing, I would say 35 to 45 dials an hour. If you're hitting 35 to 40 dials an hour, you're not getting anybody on the phone or you're getting hangups, right? You should be double dialing to hit that number. Now, if I dial the, the same lead, if I dial the same lead twice back to back called double dials, that counts as two dials, okay? Not one lead counts as one dial, it's it's two dials, right? Because I called that lead back to back. So on average, I'm, I'm you know, um, reaching out to 20 leads an hour, right? That's gonna pick up your efficiency and it's gonna allow you to get through a lot more leads a lot quicker because if you're dialing, you know, 15 dials an hour, You've reached three to five leads if you're double dialing, right? And you get a stack of 100 that week of age leads. How are you going to get through all those leads in a timely fashion, 
right? You're not. So pick up the speed to 35 to 45 dials an hour. If you're talking to people, obviously it's going to be less. If you're booking five appointments, it should be around 25 dials an hour, right? That's kind of the goal to reach there. So make sure you're booking that in, um, you know, uh, getting that speed up and that efficiency up. One other thing I want to go over is um, as you're setting these appointments, book them in tight, right? Don't leave large gaps between your appointments. You can tell a client what to do. You can tell them when you are going to schedule. Uh, I had something funny happen to me last night about one of my appointments I had today. I called the lady. I said, uh, you know, I went through the phone script. She understood everything. And so I'm starting to schedule. I was like, okay, what time do you get home from work tomorrow? She said, I am busy all day. I am so booked up. Um, so I'm not going to be available. And what I said, I was like, great. Yeah, I know what it's like to be busy. When are you done with whatever you have to do? Oh, I'm done at 3.30 in the afternoon. Right? So what did I say? Oh, I have a 4.15 available that afternoon. That works for you, right? Yep. And I sat with her today at 4.15, right? So <laughs> someone's, you know, perception of how much they have to do really depends on their personality. So don't take their word for it that they're going to be busy and then just trying to move on to another day, right? A lot of rookie mistakes would, I'd tr they try to book it out Friday or Saturday and you're giving into the client system and not staying within your selling system. So do not let them push you out of your selling system by doing that, okay? So... Um, really, really dig in on those scheduling, right? Find out what exactly they're doing without, without prying. You know, uh, if someone says they're really busy that night, oh, you're doing anything fun, right? Those casual conversation questions are going to bring up, oh, we're taking my, my son to a basketball game. Oh, that sounds awesome. When are you guys getting home from that? Oh, we'll get home around 730. Awesome. Well, I have an 815 available. That works for you, right? So by doing a little bit more investigation bit on more scheduling, investigation you're able to book in tight. Allie, I got to mute you. And Daryl, I got to mute you real quick. All right. So um, that's how you're able to book in it and really manipulate your schedule, right? You're finding when they're home and then you're taking everybody else that you're dialing and you're going to try to look at your schedule. I always have my phone up with my schedule on there so that I can know exactly what I'm trying to book. And I do what I call the clamp method. So I try to book one as early as possible and one as late as possible. And then I start clamping down, filling with appointments until I meet in the middle. Does that make sense? So that I'm filling in my day with money-making activities. That's how I like to schedule. Um, you know, you can start from either end, it doesn't matter. But if I can get one in the morning and one in the afternoon, now I know I can start filling in the rest of my day. Is everybody going to book same day or next day? No, but you can greatly increase your chances by really doing what I was talking about and digging into their schedule, right? Um, people do not know that we work strange schedules. Mark Spear, for example, he works West Coast leads and I constantly see, I get woken up by this bright light of my iPhone at 12 a.m. saying Mark Spear protected a family for 1400 AP right? He's meeting with people really late out there. So they have no idea that we work these, these odd hours. Okay. So it's your job to inform them that and find a common ground on uh, when it comes to timing, find a common time, right? Um, a lot of objections that you'll get is, well, my husband, um, you know, works nights and I work days. So we're never around, right? Well, that's not true, right? If they were never around, we never really see each other, right? So that's where you really have to dig in. Well, okay, well, I know you guys said this was very important to you. That's why you filled out this form. Um, when is the best time to catch you both that you can carve out 15 minutes for me? Guys, that might be 5 a.m. That might be 11 o'clock at night. But if they agree to that appointment, I guarantee you you're going to write that appointment, right? If they're taking the time out of their day to meet that earlier, that late, they're serious, okay? And who's going to pass up a sale because they have to get up a few extra hours early that morning, or they have to stay up a few extra hours late, right? That, that can make or break your month, make or break making you a 20K producer. You guys are all capable of being 20K producers, right? I'm seeing a lot of it. Mark, we got Mark to 20K producer after three weeks, 
when he started getting really serious about this. Allie's on some huge momentum with um, her production right now. So, you know, it, it just comes, comes down to handling this, right? And then we can get into a whole nother topic about your personal schedule. I'm not gonna get into that today, um, but that's also an extremely important part of this business is being a slave to your schedule and being consistent, right? Blocking times out for your business. It is no different than going to a J-O-B every morning, nine to five. When I am in my office, my fiance, Sarah, knows that I am practically in China. She knows that I am not available. No, I cannot take the trash out right now, but she knows I will do it later. But uh, I am busy doing what I need to do to take care of us, to give us the future that we want to have. Um, so that's extremely important to, to make your, your spouses aware of that. Because it's so easy if you're home, especially working Zoom, it is so easy just to get caught up and say, hey, yeah, I'll go do that for you. Oh, I'll run to the store for you. Oh, I know you're at work. I'll go pick up your prescription. Um, oh, the, the cat just puked on the ground. Um, I can go spend 15 minutes cleaning it up. Um, no, that's not going to happen. This, these, these are the most important times. If I was in China, I couldn't clean up the cat puke, right? If I was in China, I couldn't run to the store for you, right? Those things can wait. Right. I, I know the cat puke thing is gross. We're definitely going to pick it up as soon as possible, but that was just a facetious. You got, you guys get it anyways. So um, that's, that's really important. So, um, you know, the, the objection thing is really finding on scheduling um, really go digging hard for their schedule. Okay. Um, really try to find that common time and really try to ask them, you know, when can you carve out 15 minutes for me? People are going to understand that, right? If they keep fighting you on it, just have a continue to have a normal conversation with them and then go back and approach the question again, right? That means you just didn't build up enough rapport. It's, it's important to build a little bit of rapport so you can ask them that, that question, okay? If they come back and try to fight you. Like I said, just build a little bit more rapport, conversationalist, and then come back to it, okay? It doesn't take more than 10, 30 seconds to say something funny or to say something to catch their attention and then go right back to it, okay? So that was the first major objection I wanted to talk about. Um, anybody have any questions on um, specifically scheduling objections? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Anybody going once, going twice? You mean scheduling objections? Yeah, like if someone's saying, um, you know, I'm not going to be home or um, my husband's never around. He's not going to be here. Things like that. Oh, no. Okay. That just brought up a good point. Um, making sure that the other half is at the appointment. Do not let them tell you that my husband's not going to be there. He just wants me to take care of it. Because that'll set you up for a one-legged appointment. And what happens at the end of every one-legged appointment? Mark, can you tell me what someone says at, a, at the end of a one-legged appointment? I need to talk to my wife. Yeah, every time. It is not It is not 99%. It is not 80%. It is 100%. I need to talk to my spouse. Right? So you cannot set yourself up for failure with one-legged appointments. So if someone says, listen, you know, I'm going to be home at 4.30. Let's just get this taken care of. My husband's not home until 10. He's a truck driver. Okay. Awesome. Well, I, guys, actually, I work pretty weird hours. I do have a 10.30 available tonight. That would work for you both, right? Oh, you do? Great. Awesome. Yeah, that would actually work great. Perfect. I just nailed that appointment. Okay. I'm making that little extra sacrifice to make sure I can get this family protected, take care of them, make them understand that it's serious, and then protect my family by getting paid for it. All right. So, um, you know, another way that you could handle that objection as well is finding a time that they both have off, right? Because sometimes people do not want to meet at 1030 at night. Not everybody's going to want to do that. So um, truck drivers can only drive 14 hours at a time. So especially because of Zoom, you can say, okay, when is your husband usually off from driving? I would say a good half of truck drivers are going to be driving through the night. So he might be off at, you know, 9 a.m. And, and the wife doesn't go into work at till 2 p.m., right? 
but they're not together, right? She's right. She's not lying. They're not together, but you can actually zoom them both in at the same time, right? And you just explain that to the spouse, have them, um, you know, give your email to the spouse, make sure that she understands what's going on, how to invite the husband, and then join from there. Okay. Even I'll, I'll tell them, I'll call them at that time so that I can walk them through it and get them both on there. As long as they're both on the zoom, that works perfect. If you're meeting face to face, you need to find a time that they're both physically at home. Okay. Um, so that's how you're going to beat those scheduling objections. Now, one of my favorite objections is how much does it cost? Looking for a quote. Or I'm just looking for a quote. Exactly. Those are big ones. Oh, I'm just curious, right? Are people really curious about um, protecting their family? Are they really just curious. And eh, just, I'll, I'll think about it. You know, I kind of want to see if I die, if I want to pay off my home. No, they're pretty serious, right? Um, once the clock starts ticking when they fill out that form to how long it takes them to talk themselves out of it, right? because the human mind automatically starts justifying things. It's like getting up out of bed in the morning. You do not want to get up out of the bed in the morning, especially if it's the perfect temperature. You know, you got, you got your seven cats on you all sleeping. You don't really want to get up. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have seven cats, but um, you know, it, it, you start to think of reasons why you don't want to get out of bed. You start to justify, oh, I can spend another 15 minutes here and I'll be fine. My, wait, my day can wait for 15 minutes. That is the same way people start thinking about um, these um, protecting their family as soon as they fill out the form and mail it in. The clock starts ticking down to how long it takes them to justify it. So you have to bring them back into reality of why they filled it out in that one moment that they filled out that form. So when they say, I, you know, they want a cost or they want a quote, they're, they've already had come to the conclusion of justifying it. I don't know if I really need this. So you need to rewind them back to their why, okay? And say, oh yeah, absolutely. I can certainly do that for you. Here's the thing. I work for nine different companies and have over 85 different products. Um, do you really want 85 different quotes? Probably not. Right, um, you know, go ahead. Did I hear somebody? I've actually had someone say yes, send me the 85 quotes and I would just want to be like, listen, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yeah, so, and then that's where I would go into this. Listen, sir, this is not just an arbitrary number that I'm going to give you, right? You can go online and look up even more quotes. You can look up thousands of quotes, right? But what do those numbers actually mean to you? Would you go to a dealership and buy a car without seeing it and driving it just because you know it was $350 a month and that's what you wanted to spend? Would you? No. Then why would you do that with your insurance, especially when there's thousands of different products and how cheap it is really depends on how much coverage you're actually getting, right? You want to find that nice middle ground where you're getting most of the value for the least of your money, right? Well, that's where I step in and I can help you. OK, so with those people, I'm going to say, listen, if you if you want to go online and look up a thousand quotes, that's awesome. Right. <laughs> go ahead and do that. But if you want someone who's actually going to take care of you, take care of the time that it takes to do that, work with nine different carriers to search out the right product for you and your family that you know you're going to qualify for, not just a guesstimate that I know you can qualify for. Then I'm your guy. Which one of those would you rather do? Boom right back in their court. Mark? So to everybody, what, what this, everything that's got, that we're, they're training you, um, Blake's training you, it's all to build your confidence to have conversations with customers, right? I mean, that's it, the, the phone script, the objection handling, everything is to build your confidence so that you just have a conversation with the client not only having a conversation with the client, but being fluent in your conversation to where you're doing objection handling beforehand, right? Before you even make the sale, but you're, you're, you're hitting on every key point, every objection point on the phone script, on the, you know, the, the interview, the, the going over the sale, it's to make sure that you get that confidence level to just have a conversation. So the client I had tonight did exactly what he was talking about. He didn't do it on the phone interview, he did it tonight. When I asked him, you know, listen, we reviewed on the phone what your goals were. I would just like to hear it again. 
you know, what, what were your concerns? Ultimately, what, who are you trying to protect? What was your goal? What did you, what did you want to get out of this? Oh, I was just looking for quotes. But I, I read this guy and the way that we had the conversation before was kind of like, we're bros. We're both, we're both divorced. We both have two children. You know, we're laughing about that stuff. So I said to him, I go, Daniel, what are you going to do with the quote? Write it down on a piece of paper, stick it in your back pocket. And then what happens? Mm-hmm. You know, you, you and I are here today. We're meeting to get something taken care of. We're solving your children's future, right? Same thing that I did. I had the same exact policy I'm about to, to, pre- to present to you. Having that confidence of being able to read that client and being able to pivot and change your attitude and change the way you're, you're approaching that person, you have to get that confidence. That's why they're saying memorize the phone script. Now, when you memorize the phone script, you're not going to use it on every single client. Eventually, when you get that confidence, you're not going to be reading it verbatim. You're going to have conversations with the client, but hitting those key factors, hitting those key points of every single phone script, right? You're just going to be hitting them, but you're going to be having a conversation. It's going to flow. So right at this meeting, when I was kind of had myself on mute and I was I had a client call me back and booked an appointment, right? That it's just having that confidence, you know? being able to have a conversation with them. And he said to me the same thing, always just looking for prices. And I said, well, hey, listen, there's a lot of things that you can do online that'll get you those quotes. What I do is that I'm an insurance advisor. I'm not a salesman. I'm an advisor. A salesman is going to advise you into something that's beneficial for him. An, an insurance advisor is going to advise you into something that's beneficial for you and your family to make sure that they are protected, but ultimately fit within your budget. It's got to make sense for you, right? Mm-hmm. And that's kind awesome. of awesome. You have to transition. All right. That's my tidbit. Yeah. Mark, Mark is always good at reading these. Uh, he's been on these trainings for so long. He knows where I'm going with that because mm-hmm. confidence is the definitely the next thing that we need to talk about in handling objections. I think it's the most underrated factor on handling objections is just having the confidence, right? When we start to stammer, when we start to um and ah, on objections, that's when you're gonna get caught up and it's gonna separate you from the client immediately, okay? And then you get nervous even more and then then, they hang up, right? Or something happens. So having confidence is key. Just have a conversation with them. Don't be afraid of angry clients. Angry clients are probably 0.01% of the time that I dial, right? And don't take it personally. What I view a client as is an old friend, right? And sometimes your friends, if you know them long enough, have a bad day. Do I take it personally? If they're having a bad day or being snappy, I just know they're having a bad day. I don't take it personally. I'm just like, oh yeah, you're having a bad day. That's how I treat when I talk to my clients so that I can continue to have a confident conversation with them, right? I'm trying to get across that this is important and bringing it back up why it's important to them. So make sure you're having that conversation, um, you know, like you haven't seen them in years, right? At first, you can't sound like a telemarketer. You have to be a little, a little dry and to the point. But if someone leads in to a conversation, if I ask them how they're doing and they say, great, how are you? Boom, I'm able to explode with my personality. Oh, I'm great. Um, you know, it looks like you're down in Georgia, uh, but I'm dealing with 12 inches of snow today. Can I give some of that to you? You know, just having that conversation, getting them, you know, I use laughter. That's what I use. Not everybody has to use laughter. I use laughter. It lightens people up a little bit. Um, But just start having a conversation with them and then just bring it right back. Well, hey, listen, you know, I'm calling you back regarding a form that you or your spouse sent into our office requesting an application for mortgage protection. You remember that form, right? Okay, so I just brought it right back. So it's so smooth and it's conversation like that is extremely important. Mark, did you have another question? Yeah, so that's kind of was just kind of, uh, you know, recap or take off from what you just said is that, you know, having laughter or, or even a key phrase, because these people, they don't want to be sold. No, you guys fit. Picture yourselves. You hate telemarketers. You hate the phone calls of, hey, your car's warranty just expired. Or can you, do you have affordable health? So when they don't recognize a number, they're thinking that this is what it is. Now, if you call once, they may hang up. You call twice. Okay, somebody's trying to get a hold of me. But if you still t- sound telemarketing, they're going to hang up on you. So it's get to the point real quick. Be business real quick, but do it in a low tone. 
do it, you know, load slow so they understand. And it's just as simple as, hey, Lake. Lake, my name is Mark. I'm getting back to you on a form that you had filled out. This is in regards to paying off your mortgage in the event of death or disability. Do you remember that form? Yes. Great. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm living the dream. Well, it's, this day and age is more like a nightmare, but it's my dream, right? It's the COVID dream. And you get them to laugh. They chuckle a little bit. And they say, yeah, I guess that's all you can do now. How are you guys doing out there? You know, know your demographic, know where you're selling. So for me, it's North Dakota. I know that they are Trump supporters. I know that, you know, it's kind of cold up there right now. I know that they're, they do, they work in the oil fields, they're oil truck drivers, the majority of coal miners, things of that nature. They ride Harleys, things like that. You know, I saw, so I'll say, you know, I'm just waiting for the weather to warm up. So, you know, I can quarantine myself on my Harley and go for a ride. You're going to Harley? No, but yes, I do. You know, <laughs> yeah, man, I got a super, I got a street glide. I go riding every year, you know, and it, it's just having that conversation. Now back to the point. Great. These are, so, so, you know, these are non-medical forms. It's uh, you don't have to go in for a physical, get blood tests, urine tests, things of that nature. Um, so let me just kind of walk you through how it all goes. I'm just going to ask you a few questions that are medical related, but that I need those to present to the eight different carriers that we have and the 86 different plans that we have to offer. I do all the research for you. And of course, I'm talking slower at this point, but I'm talking fast for you guys so that we can get through this. And, and then I, I just work through it all. I set the appointment with them and then I repeat it back to them. So we set that appointment for what time? One o'clock. Great. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. All right, I'm going to send you that email. In that email, it's going to have the Zoom invite. It's going to have my agent license. These are federally and state regulated programs. I want you to make sure that put your put your mind at ease that you're dealing with a licensed agent. And it's also going to have the form that you originally filled out so that you know that I'm the right person. Great, great. All right, I'll see you at one o'clock on Tuesday. So, I mean, it's once you get that confidence level, and believe me, three months ago, I was right where anybody that's new is. I did not have that confidence level. I couldn't pick up the phone. I had to call my sister. I had to call Aaron. I had to, you know, walk around my house, slap myself in the face, look in the mirror and say, just pick up the phone, damn it. It was the hardest thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. And then I did it. And then I did it again. And again, and again, and again, and it gets easier. And all this objection handling that they're talking about, I, I learned it. I wrote it down. I applied it. I used it on the next one. I used it on the next one. And you gain that confidence. And eventually, it's just like I can multitask now where I'm, I'm on the phone over here and I'm writing down something over here for my other job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it becomes to the point where it's now it's just clockwork. It's it becomes have, second nature. Yeah, it's. And it makes it so easy. That's, that's again. Oh, sorry. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, Mark, all great points, man. You always bring some great pointers to uh, my trainings. Really appreciate you. It's exciting to watch you grow as fast as you're growing. Um, and guys, it's really simple. He's just following along. He's followed the leader, right? All I've done is follow the leader. I have followed Nelson, who's followed Aaron, who's followed Art. That's how simple it is, right? I'm just, I'm just hanging on to Nelson's coattails, watching what he's doing, asking, consistently asking what he's doing. Uh, I'm consistently communicating. I'm consistently listening. I'm consistently associating. I'm consistently working, right? I am doing all the things that it takes to be successful faster, right? I do not need to blaze a trail to figure out the insurance business. Okay, like, on your own is going to take you 10 years to do that on your own, right? When you can just follow someone who knows how to do that and, and get to where you want in a year or less. Guys, we can all be making $100,000 in a year or less, right? That is the beauty of the Lisa Group, whether it was with FE leads or MP leads or historical data drops or FE mail drops or age leads, right? You can all do it. Right. How many times have I said on this training that my very first month in this business, I did 20,000 annual premium on age leads. Why? Because I was consistently doing that. So always call your growing upline on objections. I don't say that enough. Call your growing upline on objections. If they are not available, call the their upline. Right. So your your manager above that. And then have them solve the objection and then continue dialing. I never picked up the phone until I got a hold of somebody, right? Because I was so afraid of getting the same objection and missing another opportunity. I did not want to do that. Okay. So make sure you call your upline after every objection, 
I'll, that's the last time I'll say it tonight. Um, but it's extremely important for your success. Okay. Um, we're running late on time here. I wanted to open this up for questions. Anybody have any questions? One more statement. Don't get Mark. Don't get this. Let's hear it, brother. Let's bring the fire. Don't get discouraged. Okay. And they say massive activity outweighs talent. I am not a talented insurance salesman, not by any means, because I don't even know anything about insurance. I'm just making sales, right? And it's emotional sale backed by logic. So stick to that emotion. Stick to getting comfortable talking to people. Gain that confidence to not even the confidence of insurance. That will come later on. They're going to teach you how to do this, but there's a method to the madness. And if you keep consistent, you put in that activity, you're going to book appointments. I had, just so you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 appointments this week, okay? Yes. Out of the 15 appointments, I have, I have seen um, one canceled, one no-showed, one rescheduled, one's not interested, another one canceled, another one's phone is now disconnected, um, the other one just texted me back, not interested, and I've closed one. I've closed one. Again, it's only Wednesday. I still have one, two, three, four, five, six more opportunities by Friday, right? Six more appointments. So, but that one appointment that I closed, you know, that's a week's salary right there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go through, you know, have that activity, have all those appointments booked. Don't be afraid to book appointments. You can't just book one appointment a night and hope that that's going to work because you're going to end up getting discouraged at that point. If you're booking one appointment and Monday hits, oh man, I didn't get that one. And then Tuesday hits, oh man. And then Friday hits and you got that, you got nothing because you only mm -hmm. booked five appointments. Again, mm -hmm. what did I just say? 15 appointments? I, you know, it's got to book it. You got to put in, put in the activity. You got to book the appointments. Guys, and I guarantee it, it equals out. Trust me. So if you have a bad week of 10 appointments, um, uh, like, um, you know, Mark has, he's met with one person out of uh, 10 so far, right? His last five appointments are going to be slam dunks, right? Or if they, even if they aren't, let's say he book, he, he writes a thousand annual premium this week, but he grinded his butt off to get that next week. He sets 17 appointments. Cause he's so fired up. Guess what? He's going to close 15 out of the 17 and write 15 K AP. That's how it happens in this business. Just staying consistent and making sure the numbers are your friend. Okay. Colby question. Yeah. Um, by the way, I applied what it is that we were going over tonight as far as objection handling. The two that I was able to schedule today, they both tried to get out of it initially mm -hmm. or, you know, oh, we got this to do, that to do, but I made sure to get them both scheduled tomorrow. I'm trying mm -hmm. to do better with that instead of scheduling them out. So it did, does yep. actually work. Secondly, though, um, both of them had never done Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. so, so with that, um, I told them that I was going to send the information over and I did how to mm -hmm. download it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What what more should I do to make sure I prepare them as much as possible? And I do what I can on my side to mm -hmm. make sure that things take place tomorrow. Okay. Make them feel at ease first, because some people are going to be slightly embarrassed about it, even though they didn't tell you, especially older folks. Uh, they're definitely going to be embarrassed about not being able to use Zoom. Okay. So I say, hey, I totally understand. Um, you were one of the lucky ones. You didn't have to have Zoom shoved down your throat for 2020 uh, because everything's gone virtual and get them to laugh or say, hey, that's no problem. Um, you know, I got two 85 year olds on Zoom yesterday, so I think you'll be all set and, you know, get them to laugh a little bit. OK, put them at ease. So I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. And how about this? I'm going to call you at the appointment time and walk you through it over the phone. That way you can get on with no issues. Sound good? Okay. Now they know what they do because um, one of the things I hate about Zoom is that um, they try so hard to get you to download it when it's your first time on there. And older folks have no idea what's going on. I can't tell them. I can't see their screen. So I don't know what operating system they're on, how it's going to look, what button's going to say what. It might say install. It might say run you know, depending on the operating system. So um, usually I just, I make sure I'm on the phone with them um, to walk them through it. Because if you guys didn't know this, not everybody has to download Zoom unless they're on a mobile device. Uh, if you're on Zoom, 
you just have to, if you're on a computer, excuse me, and you go into a browser and you type in zoom.com, right? Just walk them through the meeting ID and password on join a meeting. Okay. Wow. It's going to try to pop up and say, download Zoom if you don't have it. Well, right behind that, underneath it, you're going to see, if you don't see this, click join with browser. Right. That's what I always try to tell people. It's going to try to get you to download it if you don't have it, but rest assured, you don't have to download anything. You just have to click the button that says join with browser. It may take them a minute to find it, but it'll, it'll be fine. Instead of trying to wait for them to load up, create a profile and everything like that. Um, you know, talk to your upline about Google Meets because Google Meets is as easy as clicking a, as clicking the link and hopping and hopping on the chat. Problem with Google Meets is that the, um, the quality is really crappy. All right. Um, so you want to use it as, as an absolute last resort. Um, it can cut out, you know, and if it cuts out at a crucial time, you know, right when you're closing and they saw, they got a glimpse of the numbers and you didn't get to explain it, right. You're kind of, you're out of luck at that point. Right. So, um, you know, that's how I would handle that. Okay. I'll do that. I'll call them before and walk mm -hmm. them through it. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Right, appreciate and that. just make, make sure you communicate with your clients that you're telling them exactly what you're going to do. And then you better make damn sure that you do exactly what you told them you're going to do. Okay. That helps them get used to a process that helps them get used to steps. And believe it or not, that's going to help you greatly with your presentation because you're going to do the exact same thing. And guess what? They're already used to following you along. Okay. So, Hey, um, this is what I do every time I book. I, as soon as I, I set up uh, an appointment, right? Okay, um, I have a 615 available. That works for you, right? Great. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to send you a link to your email. If you could do me a favor and send me a quick reply so that I can confirm that time with my office, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Perfect. And then I get all the health info. All right. Again, my name is Lake. I really look forward to meeting you and so-and-so. At what time did we say again? Awesome. Okay. So remember, keep an eye out for that email and send me that quick reply. Then guess what I do in my email. I say, here's the, hi, it was nice chatting with you both today. Here is uh, my email for such and such time. Please send me a quick reply so that I can confirm that email, right? I'm just leading them to it, reminding them. And guess what? My show ratio has gone way, way up since I've started doing it. First. I'm doing that. You're just leading them through the process. And I've already told them that. I already told them what we're going to do, right, on that one part. So they're used to it, right? And they're already used to me having control. Gotcha. All right. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? It is huge when it comes to older folks to diffuse the situation by, by joking. Like, you know, I, I tell them, Colby, I say, you know, uh, my four-year-old taught me how to use it, you know, something like that, you know, because we're in the age of technologies. I'm a dinosaur when it comes to technology myself. So I agree with you. It's pretty, you know, do you have anybody else in the home that might be able to help you? Or I can walk you through it over the phone, you know, things of that nature. I've even gone so far as to just have them download team viewer and read the number off to me. And then I downloaded them myself <laughs> off of their, off of their computer, you know? So yeah, you can do that. It's just, you know, I haven't talked to your with... upline about that one because you're taking over a client's, uh, a client's computer um, from that saying. one. And <laughs> you can really freak out an old person with that. Especially what if their son walked in and you're talking to a 74 year old woman and they see a stranger playing around with your, with their desktop, like they're going to freak out. So um yeah. All right. Be careful but, on that one. Forget I said. Yeah. That. Be careful on that one. Talk to your yeah, yeah, about I'm, that I'm one. Yeah. I'm going to avoid okay. that one. They're they're all in their fifties. Quite honestly, they just mm -hmm. um, two of them are on disability, and the other just they never did it. So they're not even that old. They just yeah. don't know anything about Zoom, which was yeah. super rare. Yeah. Or or just say something simple, Kobe, like a conversation, like that's okay. I've had to learn it this year. I'm confident in teaching you how to do it as well. It's super easy. All you have to do is click a link. Yeah, that's what but I told how about you. This? But how about this? I'll call you at the, at the start time to make sure that you can get on it okay. Does that sound good? Yes. Right? So just adding that extra layer, it shows a little bit of compassion as well. Um, and, you know, it's going to make them like you more. So all these little things, you see how they kind of start wrapping in, guys? Start coming full circle, right? Um, you know, going back to, to $35, $45 an hour. 
right? It's going to help you get through your objectional handling a lot faster because you're making more dials, right? The more repetitions you can have in a single day is going to help you drill it in even more, right? And uh, uh, kind of an accidental effect consequence is you're going to book more appointments, right? That's a good consequence of doing that many dials. So um, one more question. Anybody need any questions answered? Hangups. Because hangups. I had a hang up. I talked to the person, you know, they, I told them who I was and they, you know, they just hang up. Yep. So I did the virtual door knock, mm -hmm. but it was a landline. Mm -hmm. So I sent them an email. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what's the step after that? Do I still that's, call That's back? what you can do. That's what, that's what you can do. The, the single best way to handle these is a door knock, guys. And if you're, I understand in this virtual day and age, that you can't, you know, fly to California and door knock or fly to North Dakota and, and door knock. Um, but that's the single best way to handle hangups is just, just to door knock them um, or wait a couple of days and call them with a different number. Okay. Hey, this is Lake Bell Vance. Before you hang up, just want to let you know, I'm not a salesman. You hung up on me last time. I know it. there's a ton of telemarketers, but I'm calling you from the mortgage protection center about a form you recently sent in. Okay. And try to try to hit it that way, right? Try to hit it right head on. You know, make them laugh. Hey, you hung up on me, but I'm not a telemarketer. You know, I say call them right like back that. now. I call them right back because, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, can you please help me? Like, Craig, I'm really confused. I mm -hmm. don't have lists. You sent mm -hmm. me a form, so I'm not cold calling. So I don't have any list to take you off. You mm -hmm. reached out to me. Help right. me out here. <laughs> right. Right. I tend not to call people right at right after hangups. Um, just because if they're in a bad mood and they hung up on you and try to get them again, you know, it's just a little bit easier to call them back later or virtual door knock them. Make sure you're sending a picture of the form when you're virtual door knocking because it's not going to work, guys. It mm -hmm. is not going to work with just the text alone. They need to see that form and have that visual uh, confirmation of what they did. Um, <laughs> And a lot of the times you'll be able to handle that. But um, great question, Daryl. Hangups are a part of the business. It happens. Um, you know, first and foremost, if they're local, door knock them. Just straight up door knock them. That is the single best way to handle it. Um, but oh. if not, sending your virtual texts and then calling them from a different number the next time you call. All right. Gotcha. That being said, guys, that concludes tonight's training session. Love seeing my regulars on here. I know you're all growing. Yep. You guys are doing great things. Um, I will see you guys again, 8 p.m. as usual next Wednesday. All right? Thanks, see Appreciate you then. Right. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night.